Should be good. Woo, all right. <laughs> now we are on. All right, number 468. If y'all would stand with me and grab your hymnals, we'll sing all four verses. Joy Unspeakable, number 468. I have found His grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. While I sit and learn at Jesus' feet, I am free, yes, free indeed. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory. Full of glory, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace within. What a wondrous messing I am saved from the awful gulf of sin. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near, I can see His smiling face. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found the joy no tongue can tell, how its waves of glory roll. It is like a great o'erflowing well, springing up within my soul. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory, oh, the half has never yet been told. All right, you may be seated. Thank you all for coming tonight. That must mean you like something about this place. All right, well, I like something about this place, too. That's why I came back. I came back so we could hear the Word of God, came back so I could see everyone here and be encouraged by y'all, and hopefully I can offer some encouragement to you, too. So, thankfully, y'all were here this morning, and uh, we had a good time this morning, and we're going to kind of springboard a little bit off of what we had this morning into this evening service. So, a couple of reminders. All right, just be, uh, be looking out for some... Um, invitation to work. All right, coming up not this week, but next week. Be look out for some invitation to work. We're looking at doing some deep cleaning inside, some deep cleaning outside. All right, weed eating, mowing, sweeping, wall washing, all that kind of stuff. We want to make this place look really, really good for anniversary Sunday coming up on the 11th. Um, pray for Pastor while he's out at Tennessee with the rest of his family, and we want them to come back Saturday refreshed not come back Saturday frazzled or earlier because stuff didn't work or whatever. Just pray for their vacation, that it will be a vacation, and uh, that he won't need a vacation from his vacation. So uh, I'm going to reiterate again, bless you, um, Jackie's retirement ceremony, Miss Jackie's uh, retirement ceremony is coming up on the 9th. That's a Friday. If you are coming, please let Miss Jessie know. She's actually running the food for it, and, and she's kind of got oversight for the food for that. So if you would let her know how many people are coming with you, and that way we can know how many people to plan for. So you can come. It's okay. Um, we don't mind. In fact, we want you to come, but we want to be able to feed everybody as well. So let her know and um, be looking forward to that. Uh, let me see. What else? Cleaning, retirement. Oh, yeah. Invite your firefighters to. September 11th. Uh, we're going out hitting all these stations, all these departments. But invite your firefighters, invite your police officers. 
All right, if you see him out on, the, out on the street, we could probably hit every single department, no one else come. You all talk to one person uh, on the street that's doing their job, and they'll come because of that personal invite. So you doing your job, us doing our job, that covers all of the directions that God wants um, covered because we are all serving him. We all have a will that we have to follow. So it's kind of exciting how the way that works. Oh, we got our memory verse. That's going to come up here in a little bit. And I hope you studied. I hope you studied. But we're going to sing one more song, and then we'll get uh, opportunity for you all to um, try the memory verse out. Okay? Let's turn to number 481, if you will. And you all stand with me. Number 481, Living for Jesus. We'll sing the first, second, and last of this song. Number 481. Living for Jesus, a life that is true, striving to please Him in all that I do, yielding allegiance, glad-hearted and free, this is the pathway of blessing for me. O Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to Thee. For Thou in Thine atonement didst give Thyself for me. I own no other master. My heart shall be Thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for Thee alone. Living for Jesus, who died in my place, bearing on Calvary my sin and disgrace, such love constrains me to answer his call. Follow his leading and give him my all. O Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to thee. For thou in thine atonement didst give thyself for me. I own no other master, my heart shall be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for thee alone. Living for Jesus through earth's little while, my dearest treasure, the light of his smile. Seeking the lost ones he died to redeem, bringing the weary to find rest in him. O Jesus, Lord and Savior, I give myself to thee. For thou in thy atonement didst give thyself for me. I own no other master. My heart shall be thy throne. My life I give henceforth to live, O Christ, for Thee alone. All right, you may be seated. Y'all look at that. Well, you probably closed your books, but I'll show you it anyways. On that last verse, living for Jesus through earth's little while, my dearest treasure, the light of his smile. You remember when we talked about this morning that when... Uh, we wake up after our last breath on earth. What are you going to see? Are you going to see your Savior's smiling face with those uh, nail prints in his hands? Are you going to see him there smiling at you? Well, we're going to talk a little about, about what pleases the Lord, and it has to do with what we talked about this morning. And I'm excited to get into it, but y'all going to have to wait until we get done with our memory verse, okay? I'm going to grab this. Hey, there we go. 
Alrighty, so I need, well, what do I need? I need Nate and Katie. Katie, you can come. Are you able to come? And Nate, you can come. All right, Nate and Katie are going to be my candy runners. You got one right there. About the same. You don't have to judge, okay? Just grab a bowl. Hey, Nate. Hey, you got to work, buddy. You're not going to be my candy runner, okay? All right, so we're going to go. Mr. Irvin, over is your side, Nathaniel. Hey, pay attention. You don't need that. And Miss Katie, you're from Mr. Dave over, okay? Now, this verse, I know that some people have worked really, really, really hard on, so I'm going to be excited to see who gets it all. All right, who wants to be first? Miss Crystal. Good job. All right, Katie strikes first. Over there. Nate, you think you're going to get it on this side? All right, Jojo, you want to give it a try? Second Corinthians, but it's close. Every man. It is a big verse. Every man as I'll help you out with one more thing. Every man as he purposeth. You know what, Jojo, how about you go back to Eli? He'll help you out with it, okay? All right, anyone else on this side? Anyone else? Al! All right, good job. Al's got one, so you can bring that over to Al, let him pick a candy. Andrew! Good job, Andrew. Hey, take that over to your brother over there. Now you've got to be nice to your brother. All right, anyone on this side? On this side? All right, going over back here. What's up, Zach? What you got? <laughs> oh, we're missing a word there, Zach. Every man has a purpose within his heart. There you go. All right, Zach, you get one. All right, good job. Good job. I know it's a longer verse. It's a little bit more to remember, but if you take it off, you know, chunk by chunk every day, you get it in your brain. Mr. Jonathan. Good job. All right, Katie, why don't you hook your dad up over there? All righty. All right, so Katie, as soon as you get back, we'll give you your candy tally. If anyone else, last second. Last second, anyone else? Going once. All right, going twice and sold. All right, we'll get your. Th well, well, it's a hard verse. You said it's a long verse. But you can have three pieces of candy. Just for running that. You can have three pieces of candy. So, what do you think about doing this more? Memor memorizing verses more. All right, and there's something that has been, we're kind of working on, kind of thinking about, but we've been busy with other things. And uh, now we're going to shift gears a little bit, kind of leaning on towards 
even uh, through Thanksgiving, through Christmas time, uh, we're working on putting a, mer- a memory verse challenge together. And when I say a memory verse challenge, I mean it's not going to be one verse. It's going to be a whole bunch of verses. So more details coming, but there is going to be something, a reward for whoever gets through the whole list. And it's going to be one of those you have from now until like Thanksgiving or Christmas. So that's a good long time, right? Well, I hope you have the attitude of a good, diligent college student when you're doing this, not the procrastinating college student when you're doing this. And it's kind of hard to memorize 30 or 40 verses in one week. So it's one of those things that we're going to work on every day. But we're going to put that out pretty soon. And uh, it's going to be pretty uh, fantastic. I'm going to like it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I would be able to do that. That's why we're going to have like three months or four months to do it. <laughs> Give you something to do as it gets colder and you're sipping your, you know, pumpkin spice latte or whatever y'all drink. There we go. All right, so let me see. Eli, are you doing the special? Are you part of the special here? You are? Okay. So how about we just do the offering right now, and then we'll sing a song, and then we will um, have our special after we get done singing, okay? So if you all come down, guys, we'll just go ahead and take uh, take care of the offering right now. All right, who's going to pray? Eli? Heavenly Father, God, thank you for this beautiful day you've given us today, God. Um, I ask that you put your hand, God, uh, on this church. Let it be a brighter, uh, shining gospel light for you, God. Let it reach out um, farther, God. Let it reach out faster. Let it reach out more efficiently, God. Um, Let it touch more souls with the gospel, God. Um, Please put your hand, God. Robert Pinnask is presenting his prayers, God. Um, I know several people in here are praying what they're going through, God. Um, put your hand of protection, your hand of healing, your hand of blessing on them, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So that was a good finish right there. <laughs> strong finish. It was. It was a strong finish. I like it. Oh, man. So let's go ahead and let's stand up. We'll sing one more song. We'll sing uh, number 490. We'll do all four verses. Verses aren't long. Uh, 490, take my life and let it be. Who said that? Okay. <laughs> Take my life and let it be Consecrated, Lord, to Thee Take my hands and let them move At the impulse of Thy love At the impulse of Thy love 
take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for thee. Take my voice and let me sing always only for my King. Always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages for thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my love, my God, I pour, at thy feet is treasure store. I take myself and I will be ever only all for thee, ever only all for thee. All right, y'all may be seated. All right, uh, hope y'all enjoy this special music and uh, then we'll get into our preaching after. was down at the feet of Jesus, oh the blessed happy day, that my soul found peace in believing, and my sins were all washed away. Let, Let me, me tell the old, old story of His grace so full and free. Let my heart keep giving him the glory For his wondrous love to me For his wondrous love to me It was down at the feet of Jesus Where I found such perfect rest Where the light first dawned on my spirit and my soul was fully blessed. Let me tell the old, old story of this grace so full and free. Let my heart keep giving him the glory for his wondrous love to me. For his wondrous love to me. It was down at the feet of Jesus Where I brought my guilt and sin Where he paid my debt and forgave me For he died my soul to win Let me tell the old, old story Of his grace so full and free let my heart keep giving him the glory For his wondrous love to me For his wondrous love to me Let me tell the old, old story Of his grace so full and free let my heart keep giving him the glory of his wondrous love to me, of his wondrous love to me. Oh, that is so awesome. I love that. Thank you all. You all did a good job. Oh, man. So as I mentioned earlier, we were going to talk about things that please the Lord. But uh, I just kind of want to talk a moment like, I want to know what y'all did this afternoon. Y'all got to eat? Y'all go home? What did y'all do? Huh? Went out to eat? 
Went out to eat. Where'd you go? Texas Roadhouse. Roadhouse. All right. Leftovers. Went to Texas Roadhouse. Got left. Hey, leftovers are good. I like leftovers. What did y'all do, Liz Ellie? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. All right. Dad made burgers. <laughs> That's the appropriate response right there. So, all right. Anyone else? Jojo, what'd you do? Yeah, we went home. That's a good place to go. All right. Tristan and Luke, what'd y'all do? We went home and watched TV. So you were making mac and cheese. Oh, well, you got to. All right. So it was a failure. Everyone's got to have those. But next time, you know what you did right. You know what you did wrong. All right. It said making mac and cheese, but it didn't really work out so hot. So they went out to eat. So. <laughs> All right. Nate. We had non-failure mac and cheese. Everyone has failure mac and cheese sometimes, and everyone has non-failure mac and cheese. But it was great. All right? I didn't have mac and cheese. I had a salad with chicken on it. All right? It wasn't chicken salad. It was a salad with chicken. All right? Reason being is I'm trying to, we got this thing going on in two weeks, this uh, retirement ceremony, and I have this very uncomfortable piece of clothing that I have to put on for this retirement ceremony. And uh, it was made for a guy 15 pounds lighter than I am right now. So I'm trying my best to lose those so that I can kind of fit in that thing. All right, so I can breathe, yes. So I'm, I'm not sitting down while in this thing. I'll, you know, I'll walk and I'll walk back and then I'll try to remove, somehow, take it off. <laughs> so, but it's, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I know, it was probably about five years ago I started noticing a change to where, <laughs> Jerry's like, yep, I know the change. <laughs> Or if I'm doing homework or I'm studying for a Sunday school lesson or I'm uh, before then, I can sit there and down half a pack of Oreos and a big glass of milk while I'm sitting there and studying at 10 o'clock at night, wake up the next morning and run four miles in like 27 minutes and not bat an eye. And then all of a sudden it just dropped off <laughs> and uh, then it stopped. So and then now I am still at the drop off, <laughs> way down the drop off. I can't do that anymore, so I have to, I have learned I need to watch what is actually going in, uh, but I like sweets. I don't know. How many people like cookies? It's cookies. All right. How many people like cake? Yep. Cake. What about brownies? All right. Someone made brownies at our house today, and I had a little bit, a little piece of brownie. All right. Zach made brownies. They were really good. Yeah, I like raising kids, and, and Jesse's doing most of this right here in this area right here, but raising kids are not a cook. Why is that? Because whenever one of them gets a hair, I want to do something. Cookies. <laughs> Isabel's really good at that. If you like, she makes these little macaron thingies. I can't have any because I'm, like, allergic to the stuff she puts in them. But sometimes I don't care, and I eat them anyways because they're good. But if you've never had a macaron, they come in those little, yes, and that happens too. But they come in those packs, you get them at Sam's Club, they're like a box like this. And, um, but hers are better than those. So, anyway, we're talking about sweet things, so it's going to make me hungry. And uh, I can't have sweet things, so I better stop talking about those sweet things. But the whole point of this is knowing that um, you know, sweet things please us, right? You sit down with a pack of cookies or a cupcake or a, or a big brownie, that's all hot with ice cream on it and hot fudge, and it's like gooing out the middle with fudge sauce. So oh, never mind. But that stuff pleases you. All right? It makes you feel good. Some people like four pounds of bacon stuffed in front of them, and, well, that pleases you as well. There's things in life that you're like, all right, that, that right there is what I need. Well, when we think of the Lord, what pleases the Lord? What kind of, what kind of smells please the Lord. And it's actually in the Bible. We're going to bring that up. But I had brownie smells in my house and that was pleasing me. All right. That was good. I had cooked chicken smells in my house and that was pleasing me. I missed the macaroni when we went out and uh, y'all pray for Miss uh, Marsha Siebert. She's in the hospital right now. Hopefully she's going to be released tomorrow. Uh, but pray for her. Um, she's got the cardiac monitor on and everything. Um, but we went to go visit her and when we got back all the macaroni was gone. So not even a smell was left in the house. 
But we had that brownie and that chicken there. It was good. Um, but we have, a, we have a focus tonight. We talked about this morning how we needed an offering, and that offering was Jesus. And Jesus took care of our need, our, our sin need. We needed sin paid for. And Jesus did that for us. But that's not the only offering that there ever was made. All right, there are other offerings in there. And it's going to be kind of like a teaching time. We're going to dive into Leviticus. I hope that doesn't scare you uh, much. But we're going to dive into Leviticus tonight. But we're talking about what pleases the Lord. And that first and foremost sacrifice that Jesus made was needed to even have a relationship with the Lord. And now we're talking about pleasing the Lord later on after that. So we'll go ahead and pray, and we'll get into our scripture. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time that you give us. And I pray that you help us to just acknowledge your presence tonight, Lord. I pray that you're going to be here, and you're going to sit here next to our hearts. And let us know what we need. Help us to know how to be more like you, how to be more Christ-like. Lord, help my words be... Uh, your words and not my own. Thank you for it all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to tell you part of a Bible story in Genesis chapter 8. So y'all can turn there if you want. But Genesis chapter 8, and some of y'all may know where I'm going with this already, but there was a man named Noah. And speaking of raising good kids, uh, there's no way that a 500-year-old guy can build a three-story boat on his own. How did he do that? Well, he had three sons. All right, that helps out a lot. So his sons helped him. For whatever reason, God provided all the wood necessary to build the boat. He provided all the fasteners necessary to build the boat. He provided the tools necessary to build this boat. He provided the pitch that was necessary to seal this boat within and without. He provided the know-how that was necessary to construct this boat in order to be big enough, but sturdy enough to withstand all of these flood conditions that was going to happen. And God knew exactly what this boat was going to go through, but Noah didn't. I mean, he may have been on the water at a point in time. There was water. There was an ocean in the world at that time. I don't know if Noah was a fisherman, if Noah took, you know, tours out there. It doesn't say. The Bible's not clear. But what we do know is that he knew enough to build a boat to survive a global catastrophe. And who gave him that knowledge? Who gave him that ability? It was the Lord. The Lord gave him that ability. Not only that, did Noah have to hire Steve Irwin or someone like that to go and find all these animals that got on the boat? No. All these animals just came to the boat. All these animals that God wanted to preserve, every single little critter that had the breath of life in them and wandered on the land, they all came to the ark. It was like God was in charge of this whole thing, right? God brought all this to bear. He had the, he had the strong backs in Noah. Well, Noah was still strong back then, but he had his sons, and they put this boat together. It didn't matter. It took him 100 years to build it. So next time your wife complains about how long it takes to do something to the house, just point at Noah. It took him 100 years, honey. I'm still ahead. Doesn't matter if it's hanging up a picture. <laughs> but God provided all of these things. God provided strength, tools, supplies, the animals. He even provided the rain. He provided everything in order for this to happen. And all Noah and his family had to do was trust in the Lord and in his direction. And they had to submit their will to his will. And we're going to see how that matters. Remember, we're talking about something that is sweet to the Lord. Look in Genesis chapter 8, if you will, and verse number 15, we're going to start there. And God spake unto Noah, saying, Go forth of the ark. We've gone through the whole flood. We've gone through the whole year-long tour at sea. Now they're on the land. They've sent the raven out. They sent the dove out. The dove hasn't come back anymore. They've waited another week, and now it's time to leave the boat. Go forth of the ark, thou and thy wife and thy sons, and thy sons' wives with thee, and bring forth, thee, or bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee, of all flesh, both of fowl and of cattle, and of every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful and multiply upon the earth. And Noah went forth, and his sons, and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. 
every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl. And whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not curse the ground any more for man's sake. We're going to talk about that sweet savor that the Lord smells. Some of us had that Texas Roadhouse. Some of us had macaroni that turned into Taco Bell or whatever it was. Some of us had other macaroni. Some of us had brownies. Some of us had cookies. All right, whatever, whatever you would have had today that was a sweet savor to you, the Lord has his own sweet savor. And every one of us, every one of us can give that to the Lord. Who has ever looked into the offerings that were given in the Old Testament? I actually studied what they were. I mean, you had different kinds. You had like a heave offering, and you had a wave offering, and you had the burnt offering, and you had the meat offering, and you had the drink offering, and you had the sin offering, and the trespass offering. There's a lot of offerings that were given, and all these were detailed in the, in the Mosaic Law. Moses laid all of these out after God talked to him on the mountain, and he went down and told his people, this is what we're going to do, and this is how we're going to run these offerings. But there's a point. First and foremost, there was one important offering that needed to be done, and that was called the sin offering. And we talked about that this morning. You cannot please the Lord at all unless, uh, unless you take care of the sin that is in your life. I want you to go to Exodus chapter 29, and we're going to start off there. You can't devote yourselves at all to the Lord if there's sin in your life. You can't even have a relationship at all unless this sin in your life is taken care of, and that sin was paid for on the cross, like we talked about this morning. Those nail prints are still in Jesus' hands and in his feet. They're still there. That was his sin offering. And there's similarities we're going to look at, what happened in the Old Testament in Exodus and throughout other books, and what happened to Christ himself. Christ was our sin offering for our lives. Everyone there in Exodus 29? Amen. Exodus 29, good. Look in verse 12. It says... And thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. And thou shalt take all the fat that covereth the inwards and the caul that is above the liver and the two kidneys and the fat that is upon them and burn them upon the altar. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shalt thou burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. And that's kind of the biblical definition of it, what it is and where it's to be. The offering of the sin offering is to be done without the camp, outside. When they had just the tabernacle and the camp and the Jews were traveling around the, the wilderness, they made this offering and they did whatever they did beside the altar, but then they took the rest outside of the border of their camp and burned it. Whenever Jerusalem was established and they had the temple built, whenever they had the sin offering, they still did all that. They did everything they needed to at the altar, took the rest outside of the city, outside of the gate, and burned it. And that's what they were supposed to do. The sin offering was someone had to die. You remember this, there had to be a death. We've gone over several of these this morning, how there had to be some death to pay for sin because the wages of sin is what? Death. death. Right. So there had to be some death that had to be done. Well, they took the animal, they killed it, but then they took it away. Isn't that the great thing? The Lord took your sin away. And so that's what happened to it. And that's why they did that. That's the only offering that they took without the camp, without the gate, without the city, was the sin offering. A picture of taking the sin from you and away from the congregation, away from his people. But that's the first and foremost thing that has to be done. You cannot please the Lord without taking care of the sin in your life. It is a necessary step. Jesus was sacrificed for us outside of the city on a cross. Hebrews 9.28 tells us, So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Christ was that sacrifice. He bore our sins. Hebrews 13, verses 11 and 12 now, if you write in notes, let me know. I'll slow down for you. But Hebrews 13, 11, and 12 tell us, For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is, bought, is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Sin is never purged from our lives without faith, though. I want to tell you that. All this work can be done. All the work has been done by Christ. Remember, we saw those. All the work has been done. The proof is there. He has the receipt. But 
They don't do you any good unless you accept that by faith. You can go through the ritual. I imagine put yourself here and you're walking around in the dirt and the dust and there's a brass altar and it's on fire and they're taking care of the offering. If you don't believe in, in what it is for, it's not going to do you any good. You're just going through the motions. That's just like religion nowadays. We can go through the motions in church. We can stand, we can sing the songs, we can pray and all that. But if you don't believe in what you're doing, if you don't believe in the God behind it, it will do you no good. And that sin offering that's been done 2,000 years ago will not be effective for your life. You have to have it by faith. Can't, believe, can't please the Lord without faith. Without faith, you cannot please the Lord. And that sin offering had to be accepted by faith. Well, sin is purged. That sin offering is done. But that's not the only offering that's done. All right? That's one type of offering. There's like two other big groups of offerings. There is one that's called a dedicatory offering. And we're not going to worry about the third one right now. We're just going to focus on this one. Because that has your burnt offering. That has your meat offering. That has your drink offering. And we're not even going to talk about all those. We're just talking about what is the purpose of a dedicatory offering is dedication. You ever heard that word before when we're talking about life for Christ, dedication? When we dedicate, we focus, we point something, we point our lives in the direction of Jesus Christ. This whole picture through the Old Testament, through the Mosaic system of offering to the Lord, whenever they offered a meat offering, a burnt offering, or a uh, drink offering, it was all to say, I am dedicated to you, Lord. That means I took something of my life and I gave it to you. I'm focused on you. And that is the whole point of having a dedication offering. Now we're going to go to Leviticus, if y'all would join me there. Leviticus chapter 1. There's some 45 times in the Bible that God talks about offerings of different types are a sweet savor unto the Lord. God's pleased with, well, not the actual like death of the animals. He's not pleased with that. He's not pleased with death, but he's pleased with it being done in faith. And that's what he's pleased by. So when we mix those with faith, it pleases him. When we mix dedication with faith, it pleases him. Leviticus chapter 1, that's where we are, starting in verse 1. And the Lord called to Moses and spake unto him, spake unto him out of the tabernacle of the congregation, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, If any man of you bring an offering unto the Lord, ye shall bring your offering of the cattle, even of the herd and of the flock. If his offering be a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish. He shall offer it of his own voluntary will at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall put his hand upon the head of the burnt offering, and it shall be accepted for him to make atonement for him, and he shall kill the bullock before the Lord. And the priest Aaron's sons shall bring the blood, sprinkle the blood round about upon the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And they shall flay the burnt offering, cut it in pieces. And the sons of Aaron the priest shall put fire on the altar and lay wood in order upon the fire. And the priest Aaron's sons shall lay the parts, the head, the fat in order upon the wood that is on the fire which is upon the altar. But his inwards and his legs shall he wash in water, and the priest shall burn all on the altar to be a burnt sacrifice, an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord. You know, when we give something to the Lord, we don't give something that costs us nothing. David was um, a great example when we look at the life of David and David and his ruling. When David messed up, he numbered the people. Yeah, he got in trouble. God gave some punishment to the children of Israel, and he chose the punishment to be under the hand of the Lord. He, wanted, he didn't want man to chastise him. He didn't want man to punish him. He didn't want man to have anything to do with it. He just said, I've offended the Lord, and the Lord only is going to be the one that punishes me. So this punishment went out, and he, was have to, he had to go and build an altar and make an offering. And that was going to atone for this sin. And the Lord told him where to go. He said, go to this one place, go to this one threshing floor and make an offering. And he said, okay, I'm going to buy this place. Well, the man looked at David and said, I'm, I'm going to give it to you. You're the king. It's yours. I'm going to give it to you. But then he says, I'm not going to offer to the Lord something that costs me nothing. 
when you offer to the Lord, it ought to cost you something. It may not cost you monetary amount all the time, but it'll take your time, it'll take some effort, it'll take some desires, it'll make you make a choice. When we are dedicating something to the Lord, that means I have to make a choice for the Lord. I have to choose to serve Him. I have to make a choice between doing what I want to do or doing what the Lord wants me to do. How dedicated is your life right now? Pictures through the Old Testament, all throughout the Old Testament, point to people taking of their livelihood, of their fortune, of their stock, and giving it to the Lord. All right, we have tithes. Tithes are an example of that. When we take our tithes and we give them to the Lord, we dedicate part of what God has given us. We went through the whole example of how Noah, God gave him everything that he needed, the strength, the skill, the supplies, the animals. He gave him everything, and all Noah did was just give something back. He dedicated what God had already given him. He dedicated that back to the Lord. And that's the point of having a burnt offering. Sin was already atoned. The sin offering was taken care of. Now, what do we do? Do we sit here in our puddle of forgiveness or do we move forward with it? Well, dedication offering is all about moving forward with the Lord. Are you moving forward? Are there areas of your life that you need to dedicate to the Lord? Are they all dedicated to the Lord? Or are you saying, well, my tent's up. I'm already forgiven. I'm going to heaven. I'm just going to chill. How are we moving forward? Because the Lord is not receiving a sweet savor because you asked him to save you. He's glad about that. They're excited about that. There's rejoicing in heaven and all the presence of the angels because you got saved. Now what are you going to do? The Bible was given to us not so that we can just be saved, but so that we can be Christ-like and we can be moving forward with his kingdom on earth. That's what we're going to do. And that's what we needed to, but it takes dedication and this whole burnt offering system, dedicatory offering that's throughout the Old Testament that shows us in picture how to take our lives and point it towards Christ. Right now, we're just talking about taking something that we own. We can call it a physical property. We can call it money and putting it towards the Lord. But it can be more than that. God provides for your offering. We talked about that in Genesis. He provided all of those things. Dedication offerings and sin offerings. They were closely related, yet separate. And we talked about how that is. Your sin offering atones for your sin. Now, your dedication offering has to point you in the direction to serve the Lord. We find that our lives are... We find that our lives, themselves, they are our dedication offerings. Not just your possessions. Not just your money, but your life. And your life includes whatever you do, whatever you touch. There was a man in 1 Samuel 15 talking to a really good-looking king by the name of Saul, and he was really tall. I don't know if you know where I'm going with this, Lacelli. But we can call him Shampoo Man because he was head and shoulders above the rest. He was a tall dude. He was great, a great picture of a king. He was so much bigger, so much stronger, so much abler. Is that a word? More able? I don't know. He could do a lot of things, and he was the picture of who you would want in charge as a man. And initially, he did really great. He rounded up an army, expelled an invasion, but then he had himself on his mind after that. And he got told, buddy, you're not doing the right thing. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of lambs. You see, he made an offering. And offerings aren't bad. But he made an offering out of something that he was not supposed to make an offering out of. So he did not obey all the way. When we don't obey our parents, that's a problem, isn't it? Don't obey your parents. When you're growing up and you don't obey your parents, they will motivate you to obey. You have to obey sweetly and completely and quickly. You have to do that, all three of those all at the same time. If you don't obey right away, you're not obeying. If you don't obey sweetly in a good spirit, you're not obeying. You know, kids will go and they'll, when you tell them to go clean your room, you know, you caught them doing something they're not supposed to do, go clean your room. They'll run off, they'll slam doors. That's not sweetly, is it? I mean, they're physically doing what you told them to do. 
but that's not obedience. And then there's partial obedience, which is where Saul was. That's where the completely thing comes in. If you're not obeying completely, then you're disobeying. What God wants is your life to be a dedication sacrifice. So that means we have to dedicate our lives, ourself, to the Lord. He doesn't just want your things. He already owns those. He can come in and grab those if he wants, but he lets you use them. But what he wants is you to decide to make your life serve him, to dedicate your life to him. Just like all of those people in the Old Testament, yeah, they had a lot of offerings, but they had a lot to dedicate towards. And the more that they gave, the more God gave. It's an amazing thing how that works. The more you give, the more you dedicate to the Lord, the more God provides for you to do his will. I want to know what it would be like to be around Noah. Now, not a lot of people liked Noah. I know that because the thoughts of man were only evil continually, the Bible tells us. And Noah was a righteous man. So if Noah was having righteous thoughts all the time, I wonder what it did to everyone around him. That would be something. All right. Um, you have people that don't like Rush Limbaugh. Who does not like Rush Limbaugh? Listening to Rush Limbaugh? No? Everyone's a Rush Limbaugh fan? Some people don't know who Rush Limbaugh is. Some people don't like Rush Limbaugh because they think that he's a blowhard. They think that he's uh, someone who just spouts off with whatever. And there are plenty of other talking heads out there that do the same thing. And they get chafed, um, like an abrasive uh, voice. And that's what they think that these people are like. And of course, there's some people that are on the other frame of mind that do that uh, to the opposite side. And it just keeps on going back and forth. Well, Noah, he probably did that a lot to those people. And why is that? Because his life was dedicated and other people didn't like that. They didn't. But God blessed him. Look how much God blessed in this whole endeavor. He gave Noah all of these things to make a literally a mankind saving task. He was dedicated in everything that he did. Are we going to be that dedicated? If you're dedicated, look what happens. I mean, you can save mankind. I don't know if that's going to happen again, at least not by a flood. But God rewards your dedication. And God rewarded the dedication of the Israelites. Proverbs 17.1 tells us, Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. Where there's quietness, there's peace. And when you have peace, more than likely, you have a right relationship with the Lord. And you have a right relationship with the Lord because you're obeying Him. You're not trying to serve yourself. You're not trying to serve selfish desires. You're trying to serve Him. And what happens? The fruit of the Lord comes out. And one of those fruits is peace. You're going to see peace. Now, I like quiet. I don't get it a whole lot because I have six kids in the house. A lot of my noisemakers are out of the house right now. They're doing house-sitting jobs. <laughs> but there's still noise. <laughs> I sometimes envy Pastor. I know you're not supposed to envy someone, but Pastor gets all this time in the quiet. It's like, what does that even sound like? There's always something going on. Unless I'm awake at five in the morning, there's always something going on in the house. But we talked about all that, whereas Romans 12, verse 1, speaks directly to us. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It is reasonable. It is average. It is the expected thing for you to do to take your life, take your bodies and everything that your body does, and dedicate it to the Lord. As a Christian, it's reasonable. Not just go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and call that your Christian service. That's not reasonable because you're doing more things that are not dedicated to the Lord. But what he says here is, I want you to present your bodies a living sacrifice. As in, you put yourself on the altar because you are dedicated to the Lord. Don't let that thing jump off the altar. Then you have to kill it because it's burnt. And but Never mind. But... Keep yourself on the altar. Keep yourself dedicated to the Lord. Keep yourself pointed to the Lord. Your bodies are a living sacrifice. See, our lives are no different than the people in the Old Testament. They're no different. 
They just had a system that they had to do to show that they were dedicated, but now Jesus tells us, hey, that's all great and all, but if you were devoting your whole life, if you were devoting your body as a living sacrifice, you would be able to give all those things anyways. If you had cows, if you had goats, if you had pigeons, and you were dedicated to the Lord, you would be able to give that no problem. If God wanted you to give um, all these things, you'd be able to say, all right, God, but you're going to supply somehow. I don't know how, but you're going to supply, and God will. But you'd be able to give it. Look what happened with David. David, when he was bringing the ark in, and it was finally coming into Jerusalem, and David is shouting, and he's dancing, and he's celebrating. You know what he did? He had a bull sacrificed every six steps that the scribes took. I don't know how many steps that is. I don't know how long this journey is. But he dedicated himself and everything he had, and there was a bull sacrificed every six steps. Just bringing the ark of God in. That's dedication. If you know, that's a lot of bulls. That's a lot of beef. I mean, beef prices were probably really good back then because there was an abundance of it. But he dedicated everything to the Lord. He wants all of you. You see, God knows that if he has all of you, if he has your body as a living sacrifice, that means everything that your body does or touches too. If he has all of that, he knows that if he asks something of you, then you'll give it because you know that he'll take care of you. He will provide for you. You're doing his will. He will provide for you. You're doing his will. He will give you strength for it. You're doing his will. He will supply skill and tools and abilities and other people to help you. That's what he's going to do for you. You make your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to the Lord, which is your reasonable service. And that's the catcher. Sometimes we think we're doing enough. When I'm going to church now, and I'm going to church then, and I'm going to church then, and they got soul winning here, so I'm doing this right now. And when I'm sitting back in my lazy chair, I want to sit there and watch the NFL and just do me. Is there something more that you could be doing? I'm not saying relaxation is bad. I'm not saying that you have to be here seven days a week because... Uh, I'm not here seven days a week. I don't know, pastor's not here seven days a week. But is your mind on Christ? Is your mind on serving Christ? Let's say you're not at church. Is there someone there next to you that you haven't talked to about the Lord? Is there someone that... Let's take this for instance. We have plenty of shut-ins in our church. How many people have called them? How many people have visited them? They're folks that can't get out. They're members of our church. They've been faithful members for years and years and years and years. Many of them before I was alive, and that's not really saying much because they've been alive and members of this church, some of them since like the church almost started. But they can't get out because of age and because of what age does to you. Are we as younger, abler members of this church reaching out to them and trying to encourage them? Is that something you could do aside from kicking back and watching an NFL game that takes four hours and wastes 10 brain cells? I mean, there are other things that we can do so that we can dedicate our lives to the Lord, so that we can make our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is a reasonable service. There's always more. God's going to show you more that we can do. If you want to know more, man, we got some jobs. You just come let us know. And we'll put you to work. But the key is, as the body of Christ, which is what we are all here, we're all members of the body of Christ if you're saved. This is our local membership body that we're in right now. God has a will for this local body to do, but He also has a separate area of emphasis for every single person in here. And if we're missing something, if everyone in here is not dedicated, they're not making their bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, which is your reasonable service, they're not doing that, then something's going to be missed. A shut-in church member is going to go to the wayside. A visit for someone that has come and visited our church and they're looking for help, they're looking for food, they're looking for spiritual meat, uh, they could go to the wayside. The grass can go to the wayside. The vacuuming can go to the wayside. The nursery can go to the wayside. 
a missionary that could be called into service could go to the wayside because someone isn't dedicating their life. So your personal dedication is important to this local body. Your personal dedication is important to your walk with the Lord. It's important. It was important to everyone in the Bible. David dedicated everything. Noah dedicated everything. We have these examples of people dedicating their lives and God doing some fantastic, fabulous things through them. So here's a couple questions. Is there any part of your life that is not de dedicated to God? Is there a room in your house? Is there a room in your life? Is there some door in your heart that if God were to ask you to open it, would you say no? Would you say, Lord, you're off limits here? Is there any area like that? Is there any uh, thing in your life that if God asked you to change, would you say, no, I don't want to change it? I'm not saying he will, but if God asked, I am not my own. I am bought with a price. And if you're saved, that's you. You are bought with a price as well. Is there anything that God would say, I want that, and you would hold on to it? If it is, if there is, if there's any area in your life like that, then you're not as dedicated as you should be. Now, I know we're not perfect. I know this. I'm not perfect. Pastor's not perfect. No one in here is perfect because we all had to be bought with a price. We are all sinners. But the way I know that God is going to make you more dedicated is if he's showing you something right now. If you could say, well, I'm doing everything I, I know to do right now and I don't see anything, well, then great. That's really not where you're at right now then. You keep driving on. Keep serving the Lord. But if something is popping up in your life, man, I really need to get that right. Man, I need to quit doing that. Man, I'm doing too much of that. I, I need to start doing this. If that's popping up in your life, guess what? God is trying to get you to be more dedicated. We need to pay attention to those calls. We need to pay attention to God's pleading for us. It says, make your bodies a living sacrifice. It's everything that we do with them. Everything that, do, that we do with our lives is that living sacrifice. So we'll go ahead and take a time. Uh, we're closing right now, but I don't want to close and just send you away. I want to go ahead and give you an opportunity to do business with the Lord. And um, I didn't pick out a song, but Miss Angie, would you mind uh, playing for us one? We're going to have a time. We're just going to play a song. We're going to do no singing. But I want to give the opportunity for you all to deal with the Lord, either in your seats or at this altar right now. If God has shown you a place where you can grow closer to him, just like it's been shown all through the Old Testament, all those sacrifices that they did, that so many offerings, every single festival, um, all the time that altar was going, with dedicatory offerings. Offerings that said, my life is yours, Lord. Everything in my life is yours. I want to go ahead and give us time to pray. And uh, time, if we need to do business with God, then let's do business with God. So everyone, let's just bow our heads, close our eyes. Let's take a few minutes to pray. If you want to come down to the altar, that's fine too. We'd love it if you come to an old-fashioned altar and did business here in an old-fashioned altar.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Thank you so much for this time you've given us to be in your word and to learn from your examples in the, in the scriptures. Lord, uh, all scriptures were given uh, for our learning, Lord Jesus, and we can learn what you showed other people and we can apply that to our lives today. Lord, I pray that you help us to go away today with uh, thoughts of being more dedicated to you. And I praise you for that. I praise you for making us to be more Christ-like, more like your son. Father, thank you for the blessings you've given us. Lord, we pray for travel safeties for Pastor and his family. And uh, pray for Marsha and praying for Miss Janice going in for surgery later. And uh, help us, Lord, help us to lift each other up and help us to be dedicated. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All righty, well, you're dismissed. Thank you so much. Get some cookies when you get home, okay? Some...